Well, Sean, former President Trump is back in the spotlight, headed to North Carolina this weekend to speak at their annual Republican Party convention. We're going to have that speech for you live tomorrow night right here on Newsmax TV. Yeah, also, President Biden's economy, missing expectations coming up short by nearly 100,000 jobs in this May jobs report that came out this morning. We're going to break down how the government gravy train is actually getting in the way of America's small businesses moving again. Yep, and it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's time for the company quiz, and I believe that Joe Conniston and I are tied up you, this you week. Did. That's right. We're going to face off against former reigning champ Seth Denson, so you want to make sure to tune in. Yeah, but first, flip-flop Fauci, man. Now, guess what? He now wants answers from China about the origin of COVID. Very timely and convenient. The embattled doctor is urging Beijing to release medical records of six minors and three Wuhan lab workers who fell sick with COVID-like symptoms. Good timing. We could have asked for this a few months ago. The minors had those symptoms in 2012, which means the virus could have existed a lot longer than the world has thought it did. That's right. And Fauci believes the records could provide insight into the origins of the virus. In an interview with Financial Times, Fauci said this, quote, it's entirely conceivable that the origins of the virus was in that cave and either started spreading naturally or went through the lab. End of his quote. But he also asked, he was also asked if he believed his own institute could have responsibility for the global pandemic. And he responded with this quote, are you really saying that we are implicated because we gave a multi-billion dollar institution $120,000 a year for bat surveillance? Yeah, it's just 120,000, Lindsay. I mean, yeah. ah, chump change. I mean, you know, for, for all of you folks out there, me, I'm a government worker. Who cares? 120 grand. I mean, maybe we are responsible. That's kind of what we want to find out. But we do know, aside from that 120 grand, the Pentagon gave $39 million mm -hmm. over seven years to a charity that funded coronavirus research at that very lab. Your tax dollars at work, folks. And yesterday, though, we talked about that Vanity Fair reporter who is speaking out against the secrecy surrounding the origins. She's now arguing, check this, that the silence itself deserves its own investigation. Check out what she said. When I investigated the lab leak question and the Wuhan Institute of Virology, uh, there is smoke coming out of every single window. But what happened to the legitimate questions of credible doubters who looked at this fact pattern and said, wait a second, doesn't this deserve an equal investigation? By the way, there is a bit of irony that she's on MSNBC, who has denied all this, who mm. has told everybody who said anything that they're crazy. And now MSNBC is like, oh, really? Tell us more about this thing that we denounced. Yeah, well, hopefully they'll start listening, Sean. You know, but Fauci, he's been on this media tour. It's rolling on this coming Monday. Fauci and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden will appear on Live with Kelly and Ryan. And again, we have asked Dr. Fauci numerous times to come on this program. He has never responded to us, unfortunately. And that's probably because he doesn't want to answer the tough questions yeah. here. But Sean, do you remember when we had Chinese virologist Li Ming Yang on our show last year. She came on in August and September. She told us then that this virus came from a lab. Yeah, it's funny. You know, like I said, w these guys are now catching up to what we were talking about last year on this show with people who said it was credible. Yeah. Well, coming up later in the show, we're going to at talk to Cheryl Atkinson about her exclusive investigation into the origins of COVID-19. But first, former Trump White House counsel Don McGahn appeared before a closed-door House Judiciary Committee hearing this morning. That's more than two years after a Democratic-led panel subpoenaed him for testimony about the Russian, Russian investigation and Trump's possible obstruction of justice. Yeah, check this out, though. Only a handful of people were allowed in the room today. No press was allowed, but one of the people People who was in that room, one of only two Republicans, was Florida Congressman Matt Gates. He joins us now exclusively to tell us what took place in that room. Congressman, good to see you. Oh, thanks for having me, Sean. And I know you look back fondly on your own days interacting with the Russia hoax. And here we find ourselves with Israel under attack, with a crisis at our border, with cyber attacks hitting our country. And what are House Democrats focused on? The Russia hoax again. We had former White House counsel Don McGahn. Uh, I found particularly persuasive his testimony that he never observed President Trump or any other member of Trump's government commit a crime, engage in any unlawful conduct. There was nothing new, uh, nothing informative in that regard. But I do think the fact that Democrats are bringing back 
Trump administration officials for questioning shows that in the absence of an agenda that improves quality of life for our fellow Americans, this is going to be their focus, whether it's obstruction of justice or a January 6th commission or the D.C. attorney general taking some action. There is not going to be a relenting when it comes to the pursuit of Trump by these vicious House Democrats. So you are one of only, I think, two Republicans in that room. We're going to have to wait at least, I think, a week before we see a transcript come out of this. Let me ask you this. When that transcript comes out, is there anything that's going to shock us about what Don McGahn said? Did he turn on the president? Did he contradict him? Anything that we're going to be shocked when we see it? To the contrary, Don McGahn, I think, thinks fondly of the president. Of course they had disagreements. When you have a tense environment like that in which you worked, there are personality scuffles, there are uh, differences of opinion on particular subjects, different recollections on particular events. But Don McGahn did not do what Democrats wanted him to do today. That's the headline. Also, I think it was very interesting, during the Russia hoax, there was a real question as to whether or not Robert Mueller became special counsel after having gotten rejected wanting his old job back as FBI director. One thing I found very telling is that today, Don McGahn confirmed that Mueller was interviewed for the position of FBI director. He did not receive that position. And just a day, just hours later after being denied that, he then had the opportunity to go and pursue the president with criminal process. I think that is very telling, and it, it really sheds light on the genesis of the Mueller probe, not illegal conduct, but really a desire for retribution. Wow. Well, thanks for giving us insight into uh, what happened in that hearing. We'll have to keep a pulse on it. Uh, but I do want to switch gears with you, Congressman, to COVID and Dr. Fauci. More reports are showing that Fauci continued to fund the Wuhan lab back in 2014. This is when the gain-of-function research was actually paused by NHL, NIH. Uh, but he allowed the Wuhan lab to continue to get taxpayer money to research gain-of-function. Do you think this is why he doesn't want the American people to think that this leaked out of a lab that possibly he allowed taxpayer dollars to fund? Dr. Fauci has blood on his hands, and now the entire country knows it. We know that the very type of research that erupted this virus onto the world was research that the U.S. taxpayer was funding in part, and that Dr. Fauci and his friends were directly involved in. And then in April of 2020, when I came out and said that this is something that escaped from a lab, it's not something that jumped from a bat to a pangolin, whatever that is, uh, I was smeared by CBS News, 60 Minutes, and the like for having even suggested such a racist concept. Now that we're seeing the emails, not only are we getting to the truth, we're also identifying those that were involved in covering up the truth, and that's where the cover-up lands right on the desk of Dr. Fauci. So speaking of those emails, it was interesting. Yesterday we had Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch on. He talked about the fact that Fauci, from what he could gather, reviewed and personally redacted each one of those emails, something that he had never seen in 23 years. Is there any way that you and or folks in Congress can actually find out what was redacted? Uh, we are going to have to get to the bottom of that. I was actually in a meeting today with Jim Jordan and members of our judiciary staff regarding the basis for some of these uh, redactions. For example, why is it that Mark Zuckerberg is able to offer up Facebook and various tools that he wants to design to help Dr. Fauci craft the message, but then the American people are unable to see that and ascertain uh, what it was that Zuckerberg had in mind with this Fauci collaboration. I think we should all try to know that, particularly when the message they were trying to craft was false, not only on the origins of the virus, but on things like masks as well. So Facebook will not be able to hide behind trade secrets exemptions. Dr. Fauci will not be able to hide behind his own redactions. But as you know, Sean, very hard to get to the bottom of things when you don't hold the power and the gavels in Washington. That's why the Republicans retaking control of the Congress in 2022 is so important. It will give us the oversight authority necessary to lay this bear before the American people. Congressman, I do want to ask you about that because it's been over a year now. We still don't have an answer. Obviously, China is probably doing anything they can to hide this information if they haven't already. So how can Republicans hold them accountable if we still don't have the majority in any way? 
We're going to have to get the majority. We're also going to have to use the FOIA process. You mentioned Tom Fitton, a frequent guest on Newsmax. Tom Fitton does more as a private citizen to get to the bottom of records than the entire House of Representatives, it seems, on some days. And so I, I think that we're going to have to really dig into the documents. And then we're going to have to look at some of these international organizations. One thing that Joe Biden will never do is hold globalist entities like the World Health Organization to account. And so if we get power back in the form of committee chairmanships, we not only have to look at our own government, but we have to look at the partnerships that we've had and whether or not those partnerships in order to the benefit of our people or whether or not they just provide the largesse of the American taxpayer for China's interests and global interests, not American interests. Mm. Yeah. Congressman Matt Gates, thanks for being with us, especially on a Friday night. Thank you. It's always great to be on. I'm a big fan of the show. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.